we will try to work about uh, four different clinical situations about 4.0 medicine, the medicine of the future. The first is the presence of decisional algorithm accessible to the patient and perhaps also artificial intelligence. The example I have uh, given here is the idea of Google to use the uh, big data of Google, uh, what people are seeing on Google to make preventive medicine to make also epidemiology. You know that Google wants to prevent the, the, the flu epidemics. But here it is a paper I have quoted here about the uh, screening for pancreatic cancer uh, with an algorithm that uh, people can use on internet. Uh, the second is uh, uh, what we named the tick box culture. It is the, the fact that uh, People uh, think that they can manage uncertainty with tick boxing mentality, where uh, different points are uh, prepared to tick, and we can have the diagnosis, and we can make also research, and with the cerebral imaging, neuroscience, we can also have a, a, a good uh, image of the problem. The example I am giving here is the example of the bodily distress syndrome. You know, the bodily distress syndrome is now um, a new uh, diagnostic category that uh, is uh, discussed in the Wonka group of mental health uh, to introduce this uh, uh, diagnosis to uh, cover uh, all what we can name uh, in the French tradition, psychosomatic medicine, uh, all the, the things that are fibromyalgia and so on. And uh, based on following criteria, uh, uh, more than three symptoms from at least one of the following groups. There are all groups of disease uh, possible, uh, cardiopulmonary, aut autonomy, gastrointestinal, musculoskeletal, general symptoms, and so on. But where the daily life is affected, and uh, when the relevant diagnos diagnoses are ruled out, all somatic diagnoses are ruled out. And I have uh, given you some references about that. You can have on the, on the PowerPoint. And one uh, taking also this diagnosis in uh, uh, link with uh, uh, neurosciences, uh, where these scientists uh, think that uh, uh, this problem is a decreased interhemispheric functional connectivity in insula and angular gyrus and supra marginal gyrus. Uh, it is a uh, um, this uh, kind of medicine that I want you you discuss. Another problem is the problem of new technology for more accurate diagnosis. The example is to use, for example, a, a lung ultrasonography. We have a research in Lausanne where um, the researchers are proposing uh, with a public health fund uh, to uh, see if uh, lung ultrasonography is better than X-ray to uh, detect uh, uh, pneumonia. And also another uh, thing, the e-dermatoscopy is a, a, a device where you can send by uh, email, by a device. You have a dermatoscope. You put a dermatoscope on the skin, on the lesion of the skin, and you, 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 you send the, the image to a specialist who can see the image and uh, uh, give you a feedback with uh, his uh, diagnosis. You know that uh, a person who sees uh, every day uh, for example, melanoma has a more better diagnosis than a, a, a person who says uh, image uh, not every day. And uh, the third is the problem of biosensors. The, the example uh, we can we can ha we can have are the external biosensors. For example, uh, uh, the ICT for Life project is a European project for the 2020. Uh, project of uh, the European Union. Uh, um, it's a, a, a project about uh, people suffering of uh, Parkinson disease and uh, um, Alzheimer's disease, and uh, who are controlled by a camera 
uh, linked with the mobile phone of, uh, of the, the daughter or the son. They are in restaurant to see what uh, is the, the grandmother doing in the, in the flat. Uh, and with also some alarms. And uh, you know also the Im implantable cardioverter with uh, uh, some uh, uh, biosensor who can say that you have a, a ventricular fibrillation and uh, you can uh, uh, make that the, the heart goes better after defibrillation. Uh, and all these things can be uh, linked with mobile phone or also, I have uh, here a quotation, and also they can uh, be um, uh, directly linked to the solution hmm, as uh, the implantable cardioverter. The question we are asking now is uh, how is your position uh, before this uh, change of the medicine for the future. Uh, what is your position with a patient who is coming with a Google algorithm and wants, for example, the MRI? The second is, what is your attitude facing diagnosis based on data and criteria? What is diagnosis? Is diagnosis only data and criteria? The third is, what matter with your clinical competencies if you use devices to ameliorate your, uh, your competency or not, and the, 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 the clinical competencies, what matter? And the last, what is your attitude facing a patient with one or two or three or four biosensor, external or internal? Uh, with the, I have a patient who is a hairdresser, and when he goes to the restaurant, sometimes he has a, for him, it is, uh, it is quite difficult. We have discussed it many times, but uh, possibly it saves his life with a... Okay, uh, we can... Uh, I want to see how many you are. Well, Before to be the chair to the rapporteur, uh, I have just mentioned here the question you asked about the mm -hmm. NAPI report. Uh, the Lancet Commission Culture and Health is published in 2014. Uh, I think it's a paper that uh, made a very good presentation of what anthropology and medicine uh, have to collaborate together. And uh, you have also in this paper the reference about the, the, the box clicking mentality. Please, the first, uh, the first rapporteur. <laughs> Come here, come here. Uh, come here, and I, I take some some scripts and notes. You have a group. Uh, so we were talking about biosensors, and you get these hitches. <laughs> uh, so with, uh, in our group, we had doctors and we had we had an engineer. So it was really interesting to come from the point of view. Um, so we were talking about biosensor, and we went straight away where where biosensors can lead us. So we we. We went in the black mirror mode, so we went in the, dystopia, in the dystopia mode. So, okay, imagine a world where actually everything you, everything in your body is monitored and the sensor can act on your body. So we had people that were really 
um, that thought it was a really good idea because we could detect pathologies earlier, we could act on it before consequences, so basically maybe disease could disappear. And we had people that were a bit less enthusiastic and that were um, uh, concerned about um, how you can um, appropriate this data, how you can, the dangers as well, so where the data goes, who gets the data, um, does the machine, does the diagnosis itself, so are doctors still necessary, um, and, and how the patient and, and everybody can really deal with uh, this new uh, way of interacting with your own body. So um, that's what we so it was pretty high level and I don't know if you were really like on the on the topic, but it was definitely about the future of medicine. Um, so we talked about personal personalized medicine as well, because uh, the more we have sensors, the more we have data, so with big data we can have more and more um, uh, personalized uh, diagnosis, personalized um, understanding of, of, the, of the body. So this is a good point. Um, and we have we had we talked about the data access um, of terrorists, like if your if the insulin pump are are uh, under are accessed by by someone that wants to harm you or the pacemakers. Um, so yeah, the, the at the end what we were talking about is that um, that this is something that is happening. So these technologies are going to be here soon, and there, there are a lot of technologies that are building right now. And so what do we want to do with them? And how do we want to be part of the conversation that uh, decides what, where, um, what access we give them and what we want to uh, still use as humans? So pretty philosophical. I guess, but that, that was about it. Your group wa was very passionate. <laughs> yes. Can you sure. say something about this, uh, the mood of your group? Yeah, we, we had pretty, It was the conflict pretty... between engineers and doctors? Or? No, no, actually, yeah. no, no. Okay. Which is um, a bit sad because this, these things, we're going to have to work together. Because engineers are building the stuff, and we're the doctors, and we're going to be using them. So we definitely want to be talking to them. And so, yeah. The, the but but engineers seems to have a very um, uh, optimistic view of how the technologies <coughs> is going to enhance our lives, and doctors seems to have a bit less. Sceptical <laughs> view. Yeah, I mean, they want the technology to get there, but they just want to be able to keep the control of it, and they want to keep the human part of it. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, are, are there other people in the group who wants to to, sure. to 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 say something else after this report? Nobody. You had a question. Yes. Uh, did you notice a difference in the doctor group between new generation and less new generation? <laughs> so we were all young females. <laughs> 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 and the, the, the young male doctor was uh, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he, didn't he was moderate. He was moderate. moderate. <laughs> okay. So we don't have, but I, I guess that would be. I don't know. It's just a question. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, there I is a gap, or is there no gap? There is no gap. We need to investigate. <laughs> investigate the gap between young and old. <laughs> investigate. It's a large gap. <laughs> young. I totally agree with the discussion. Old. Okay. Thank you very much. I'd like to, I'd like to add you you want to add something, yes. If I may. You can you can you, you can take the microphone.
No, you have a good voice. Thank you very much. So, um, you made a very anthropological uh, job in your group. Oh, no, I don't like to speak in this <laughs> thing because I speak with my hands and it's always dangerous for a microphone, so I will try to, to take care of it. So, um, uh, I think your discussion was very, very interesting. Um, there are two different levels. I think you've, um, you've tackled uh, the ethical aspect and you've also tackled the anthropological aspect. Uh, because when you said um, there is a danger uh, for the access for terrorism, for instance, uh, I think it is the ethical uh, issue, uh, which is, in my view, the way we use technology in, in terms of how to use technology in the best way. I mean, considering that these biosensors already um, exist, they will exist more and more, and uh, considering it's a matter of fact, um, there are consequences, and one bad consequence might be this um, use by terrorism. So, um, but I, as an anthropologist, I'm more interested in what's going uh, before these objects, these devices do exist. And um, the question for the anthropology is not how to, to make good use of these technologies, it's, um, my question is, uh, what for? What for do we develop these technologies? What kind of society are we by building with these technologies? And it's what you talked about when you, you talked about dystopia. Um, but you said, what, what does it mean if every function can be monitored? So this is uh, the, the basis of my, my um, questions. And when I was listening to you talking together, I could hear the word uh, predict. You were talking about prediction. Uh, I, I could hear the word very, very often in your discussions. And it leads me to um, a reflection about another word I, I didn't hear, but which is uh, the, the next logical a step, it's eugenism. Uh, because when you talk about predicting everything, uh, you are on, on a way uh, which is the one that leads to eugenism. That's all for now. <laughs> Thank you, Daniela. And now the second group, please. The group who want to be the second. <laughs> Which group are you? Tick boxing. Tick boxing. Tick, tick boxing. Tick boxing. Uh, tick boxing. You, you know the difference between tick and tick? Yeah. Huh? Click is the security you have tick. Tick boxing. Huh? We hear some things that. And it is the security you have tick. So I introduce myself. I'm Ken Oberto from Brest. So our focus group was about tick box, which we define to talk which is, uh, remember, it's like using tools for you take and uh, which is okay. using tools with a uh, with take that can uh, help us in our practice. So our group, uh, I tried to summarize it in three points, like properties that tools may have. Um, just before uh, before starting. Uh, Rook said we use it often. We use often tick box. And some people use it to negotiate with patient or use it to show him his condition, like with a number, uh, to convince him of the medical condition. Uh, the, someone use it as a, to help him uh, share decision making. A lot of people said the tool tick box to help diagnosis. And there are also reminder for reminders in general, like checklist for safety when you are doing something. Use a checklist, that, like um, such as in uh, surgery, or they use it as a reminder for things to look for or to ask to the patient. Like someone used a uh, well score uh, for pulmonary embolism as an example. Uh, tick box tools are often uh, they permit a gain of time. They are quick. 
we can also make uh, patient, ask patients to do it themselves. Uh, so uh, not in consultation. Uh, people use it for teaching and for examination. Uh, like for assess, assess knowledge, I think. And they use it also in teaching because they think they make trainees less anxious when training uh, teach everything because people said we think trainees are mm, learn medicine right now uh, with tick box with keyword tick box so and <coughs> someone also had the tick box tool may have may help task shifting uh, they precise task shifting I don't know if everyone uh, is aware of what task shifting is task shifting is like something we normally do right now and maybe we with the tick box we can ask someone else to do it in our place. Like the example given was for normal, uh, simple cystitis, in a bladder, bladder infection, with a, an, appropriate, an, an appropriate tool, we can may ask our uh, nurse or our uh, in, the in the pharmacy to give patient medication. Um, some properties, tools, tick box should have, uh, a, a tool so, such, as, such as a tool should change our medical attitude. Like a tool should, if we use it and it gave, gave us a result, it should change our attitude on what we do. Uh, still, we should be aware and be careful of misuse, which is, uh, for example, tools which are validated or created for something and used for something else which still is the mission of GPs, of doctors, uh, when uh, using tool, is to help choose to help patient or for him to choose the good tool in the good context and for the good reason. Uh, a tool should be feasible, is time, the time will be, will be given, and uh, a doctor should be aware of the tool properties, like uh, sensibility, specificity, and psychometric properties. Uh, is some of, I would say, cons, some uh, problem with tools. Uh, someone said it's an American way of thinking. A lot of checklists, like item checklists, and which is kind of different from our culture. Um, maybe still, still good as a checklist. Uh, and someone else said they uh, he doesn't like it because it doesn't like numbers. Because sometimes too, with yes or no, uh, they are missing the gray zones. Uh, okay. That's all. Uh, okay. okay. Do you want to? my group? The group want to add something? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you have something yes, I just want to add uh, that I, I thought this is uh, not only an American, but an administrative word. it was to measure. I don't know what you were talking about because I missed the beginning of the discussion, but when I arrived and I started listening to you, I heard someone saying it's, it's important because uh, we can measure. 
So uh, I think we have to put together the two discussions now because it's a keyword. My keyword, the previous one was uh, predict, and this one is measure. And if we put everything together, we have um, an idea of the, the definition of the human beings that are, again, behind uh, this kind of practices. Uh, because in my view, when I'm talking about a uh, tick box, uh, this idea of putting people in different boxes is just the beginning of the process. But if we, if we go until the extreme point of the process, it is translating uh, the human being, I mean the materiality, the body of the human being, into data. And if we simply look at, um, here in the, of the, the, the exhibition here, uh, you have, for instance, echography. Echography is a kind, from my point of view, echography is a translation of the body into data. And we have also here in the exhibition, editor de solution de simulation numérique pour la formation en santé. So it means once you've translated the real body into data, you create a virtual simulation of a body in order to learn. So the extreme point, in my view, is, uh, is uh, this one. And to make another link with the first, um, the previous uh, group, um, Objet Connecté, it's also something you have here in the exhibition. Objet Connecté au service des professionnels de pensée, de, pardon, de pensée, service des professionnels de santé et des patients. So the idea is you have sensors, they are not implanted, but it makes sense. The next step will be to implant them because it will be uh, argued it's easier if it's implanted. And um, the idea is to make, again, I, I say it very shortly and very simply, but in my view, uh, the last object connected is the human body with its um, biosensors and, and uh, that kind of things. The last connected connected object is human body, huh? Yes. But uh, I, I think it, it was a question here. Yeah. yeah, what I don't see is um, uh, we see tick boxing as simplification, but mm -hmm. we didn't speak about uh, the complexity of the depth. Because at the end, if you have a body with uh, analogic signal, and you numerize it, so you discretize. And tick boxing is just discretizing uh, um, something that you see, that you feel, that you measure, and uh, something that is numerical, tangible, that you can analyze. Um, probably, uh, even though tick boxing can be uh, uh, seen as a, a limited way to analyze things because you could people in cases and, and you, you put separation, at the end, if you uh, build a model that is complex enough, uh, you have enough cases where you can put everybody. What I mean is uh, it might be uh, the only way to analyze people by uh, putting them in cases and uh, discretize as information and, and decide through a tree, decision tree, uh, and at the end, what I see with medicine is somewhat about this. You, you go through a, a tree of decision, and you take and you push your investigation towards the direction where you have uh, the more leads uh, uh, for to you push your investigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is something between boxing and depth of uh, discretizing the information and going uh, through uh, the data, the analysis of the patient. Okay. Thank you. You have also a comment? And just a small idea. Is it possible that when we are not using tick box that we are making unconscious tick boxing? <laughs> Unconscious tick boxing. 
the man is a tick boxing animal. Okay. The group three. Thus, the question that came out was when to use new technologies. And there, was, there is a risk if you use new technologies everywhere for everybody. There is a risk that is you make patients sick when they are in good health because you find things that they, that they would have ignored for their whole lives. They would have grown <coughs> old and in good health without knowing that they had something that would not kill them. Thus, when do we use the image? When do we use the lab test? When do we change the practitioner behavior? When do we change the patient behavior? Do we change the behavior or do we only change the follow-up? Do we keep the same treatment, but because we have an image or we have a lab test, we change our follow-up, we change our way to, to, to look after the patient in time. The second example we, we are talking about after ultrasonography was either metoscopy. Uh, we came to the conclusion <coughs> that computers were more accurate for dermatologic uh, diagnosis than dermatologists themselves. And if the images of dermatoscopy were analyzed better by the computer, it could mean that the people would use the device themselves because they would not need any more any doctor. And they would make their own skin uh, they would make their own skin um, mm -hmm. uh, Screening. They would make their own skin screening themselves, and they would not come to the doctor saying, "I have uh, my my blood pressure that is too high." And we have the experience of people who write to the uh, to the office saying, oh, "I have 160 of uh, systolic blood pressure. It is an emergency." Here they would come and say, "I I I have cancer. I found out myself." that I had a cancer. And they arrived to the doctor because the der dermatoscopy said this is a melanoma or this is whatever, another cancer. Or, uh, and the doctor will have no more to look after and find melanoma but treat a post-traumatic syndrome <laughs> used by the machine. <laughs> And there's another point, <coughs> who are the people who are going to have these instruments? Isn't there going to be a gap into the population, in between people uh, who have the opportunity to buy these technologies and, uh, and to use, and who have the literacy to use it, 
and there's the head of it. Um, that was about new technologies, patient literacy. And does the doctor have to prescribe point of care of self-testing and how to face patient anxiety when you do it? How to face patient anxiety when you have been prescribing point of care self-testing mm -hmm. for patients? Uh, then we turn to the basic values of the medicine that are somewhere unchanged since hypotrachis. And does medicine have to adapt to new technologies as patients do? Because uh, the world is a global village and if these new technologies are going into the patient's life somewhere in the world, it will spread over the rest of the planet quite fast and then we'll have to deal with it. And it's not trained in the university. The doctors are not trained for that in the university. And but it is a big interest for the young residents. It appears to be a big interest for all young residents, all these new technologies. Uh, and then to that point we were thinking about the usefulness of these technologies without fascination. We say that some medical specialists were very fascinated by new drugs, while GPs mainly were not. This means that would also some medical specialists be very fascinated by new technologies, while GPs were more attent to see what is coming out of that, what, is, what are going to be the outcomes. This usefulness, if it diminishes diseases, if it permits to people to live longer in good health, but also risks of unnecessary expenses and of psychotraumatism. And to that point, I guess, uh, maybe uh, you have to add something that I forgot. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Then you left with one left for five minutes left. Yes. you want to make a comment? We oui. can make a comment. The last week. Yeah. Yes, again, um, you have the two ethical and anthropological levels of what you said. Uh, when you talked about making patients sick, uh, it's a typical ethical 
question when you said you talked about the gap between the haves and the haves not the have nots. Um, there are ethical questions. Again, my focus would be more on, uh, you said, for instance, uh, you don't need a practitioner anymore for screening, for instance. Um, this is a very important anthropological question because it's a uh, question of uh, changing human beings and, uh, and machines. Um, and you said something very interesting to me because you said it's good if, um, if you can live longer in good health. As an anthropologist, it is exactly what what I'm questioning. Why in our society do we want so deeply uh, live longer? We have anti-aging medicine. It means if you are if you have just a few wrinkles, you have to go to the doctor. So it means something very natural, such as becoming old and dying is not uh, acceptable anymore in our societies. It's what that's a new question in the mm -hmm. Thank you. The box door, please. Um, please apologize for my uh, very bad English. Uh, I will try to summarize uh, the long uh, discussions with my group. So uh, we, we were speaking about uh, algorithms and especially uh, the Google uh, uh, information uh, patients uh, came with at uh, our country patients. Uh, so uh, the first point we, we, we were speaking about was uh, to, to include it in our practice because uh, we really have to speak the patient, to speak the question, to ask the question to the patient. Uh, uh, <coughs> you use uh, internet uh, before coming and, and, uh, to, to my office. Um, did, did you see some information? What, what do you want to, to, to tell me about, uh, about the information you, you were uh, reading on the internet before uh, the consultation? Uh, the, the patient uh, could, uh, can uh, ask for exams or uh, some, some prescriptions, but uh, uh, it was not the, 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 more, the, the most the, the, the situation that we encountered. The question of frequency is not so frequent. Yeah, it's not so frequent. Uh, uh, but uh, they, they were uh, reading on the internet some elements uh, before coming. We, we identified two situations uh, very different of uh, uh, information uh, such as on the internet. Uh, they, they were, there are some patients uh, with. Uh, Severe uh, diagnosis, and they are, they are looking for some new treatments and some uh, uh, new events that the general practitioner can uh, not done by the practitioner. So it's a kind of. Uh, So down by the patient uh, through the internet. Mm -hmm. The second aspect, very different, is a patient with uh, multiple symptoms and, and uh, who is asking to Google uh, finding the solution of this. Uh, and uh, due to uh, due to the, the the fear of the information. The, he, he, he has found and come to the consultation uh, to, to get some advice of the general practitioner. Uh, 
so we 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 were speaking about uh, so the, the availability availability uh, availability. The availability of the information uh, uh, from the from the on, on the internet. Uh, the, there are some websites uh, with uh, certificates, uh, official certificates. Uh, we were uh, asking uh, us if this kind of websites are available or not. Uh, so it's kind of information we can uh, uh, give to the patient. Uh, uh, um, then uh, one question was uh, if the internet and Google uh, make the, the job uh, or not. And so um, the, there are multiple positive points uh, to, to, to this. And it could be very helpful, uh, but there are some elements. Uh, and, uh, the fear of the practitioner uh, about the uh, confidence of the patient, the uh, loss of confidence in the patient due to uh, uh, the, the Google uh, information. Then finally, um, the question was, uh, is the internet in the place? <coughs> practitioner or not and uh, the group uh, said that the, there is a, there is not not the impasse on uh, some ends like this uh, uh, with internet internet is just uh, uh, some biomedical competences and uh, the yeah. practitioner uh, competences is uh, more important than just biomedical aspects so in conclusion, uh, we said that with a good relationship with the, the practitioner, uh, GPs will, uh, will do uh, their, their whole job, uh, they always do the, their own job with new elements, new uh, tools, like internet, like Google, uh, algorithms. General practice will continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or should continue. <laughs> okay, thank you. Other <laughs> comments for, from the group? Is it a difference between information and decision? Because what I see with the internet can be either a huge source of information and something <coughs> that can lead patient to decision. And it was one of those posters that was analyzing uh, the world of the internet as uh, information, but at the end, a uh, patient believed in uh, the practitioner decision. So still this uh, gap between uh, uh, information and decision. And uh, on the other hand, some people who are treating themselves to take the decision from the internet to treat for cancer with alternative uh, treatments. I uh, discussed with the, the lady who was um, with a breast cancer and who was uh, convinced of her capability to deal with her cancer with uh, a precox. Um, I know I've heard about uh, uh, this abricot mm -hmm. uh, and uh, with uh, raising the shoulder without THC, all this kind of treatments and, uh, through the internet, uh, this kind of patients that take the decision to manage the treatment by themselves. So I see the two stories yeah, information and this. Thank you. Comment of the uh, Yes. Um, it's linked uh, to what you said between information and decision because in my brain, I work well, 
when uh, people trust you, they, they can get informed by the internet but they trust the decision. But I was very interested when I could hear the discussion previously because I could hear you <laughs> talking about conflict. And that was, it was, it was, it was funny because when we said patient comes with Google algorithm and wants an MRI, we didn't talk about the conflict, but it was taken for granted for you that it would be a conflict because you said I had never had this, this kind of conflict with uh, one of my patients. Uh, I had conflict, but it was about something else. And I thought it was very interesting in your mind there was a shift and you, you directly translated this situation into a conflictual situation. And I think we have to think it in relationship with um, uh, the idea that was mentioned, that was mentioned by the two um, upper groups, uh, that um, practitioners might disappear and might be replaced by, um, by the machine for, for screening, for instance, you said in the previous group. Hmm? No, so. <laughs> yes, you said you, you had a conflict when someone said my old uh, doctor no. was was you. Yeah. The old doctor did, did it that way and you have to do it that way. I, I thought it was interesting and I I, I I encourage you to think about uh, your taken for granted uh, ideas. So maybe, because I, I have to leave after, may I uh, you, make you a general can, comment? Well, you, you, can, you can make the, the conclusion with the last... Uh, yes, please, huh? yes. Uh, well, th this was a, a, a slide to, to show you that even in the more traditional uh, uh, building, there are uh, medical devices. Here it is in the Catalan <laughs> 16, uh, in Rome, in the Vatican. Uh, but uh, you can comment to, for finishing the, the last uh, slide. Yes, Please, because uh, to say it in a very simple and short way, uh, I think the technologies we are currently developing are like uh, the, co the two sides of the coin. The same coin, they are complementary to each other. On the one side of the coin, we have all these machines um, to which we delegate human abilities. Uh, first, we had uh, Robots helping people in cars uh, for buying car for buying not for building cars, and after we had computers and uh, artificial intelligence. So first we delegate our physical strength. Uh, in the second step, we started delegating our our brains to uh, our smartphones and uh, to our computers, and um, decisions are more and more delegated to. Uh, machines, if you think simply of um, an aircraft, in an aircraft, part of, part of the decisions are taken by the machine. Um, and now we, we even start to delegate our rela relational um, abilities with uh, what we call the robots companions, especially for helping elderly people. So um, this is one side of the coin, and in my mind, it is uh, the two. Uh, the two upper situations are part of this side of the coin. So we call them uh, GP replaced by technology because, uh, and it was mentioned several times, uh, the practitioner might be <coughs> replaced by, uh, by the machine. Um, we call the second one enhanced GP, especially because we had a discussion about someone who works with you and, and call you remember, you told me he calls uh, enhanced GP when he's using that kind of technologies. But in my view, it's a bit more complicated because as we could see very well in our discussions, um, at the end, uh, both of them are replaced by technology. I mean, the trend is uh, this one. So even if your colleague is convinced he's an enhanced GP, the question that was asked is, Will, will the GP be replaced by technology? And the other side um, of the coin is, uh, so on, on the one hand, we are giving, we are providing machines with human abilities. On the other side, we are treating more and more human beings like machines. So um, patient replaced by numbers, we said at the end, we, 
And yet it, was the, data. it was data, yeah. patient yes. replaced by data. So this idea of understanding what's going on in our bodies and in our minds uh, at a biological level, uh, in order to be able, once we've understood how it's going on, we can, we can master, and once we can master, we can also build biosensors and include them inside the body. So again, um, the patient with biosensors might feel um, like an enhanced patient, but at the end, again, it's the result of his translation into data. So I know I'm not very optimistic, <laughs> but at the end, I, I invite you to, to think about, uh, about that. And it, it's uh, related in the way I see it after several years studying that kind of technology. But I'm sorry, I apologize, I have to, Thank you very I much, have to go Daniela. because I have a train to catch. Yes, yes, it is. Thanks very much.